I hope you're ready for some serious tech because in this video, we're gonna be looking at dynamos and we're gonna explain what they are, how they work and why you should be using one. For this video, we've luckily been sent a nice new pair of Hunt Super Dura Dynamo wheels, which I have to say, I'm genuinely impressed and surprised at how normal looking the front hub is. And granted it is bigger when you look at it front on and a bit more bulbous than a normal hub, but especially once it's on a bike, it's hard to tell the difference. There are two main types of dynamo, hub and bottle. Now bottle dynamos attach either on your seat stay or your fork and they're designed to contact your tire and as the tire moves, it moves the dynamo. Now these aren't great. They're not the most efficient. They're quite hard to set up. They can move and they can also wear out your tires. So in this video, we're gonna focus on hub based dynamos because they're the most common type of dynamo you generally get today and they're also far more efficient and this particular model we have here is called a Son Deluxe and it's got some pretty cool tech in it. First of all, how do dynamos actually work? Well, it's quite simple. There are a series of magnets inside the hub that move around a copper coil. Now, the action of the magnets moving around the copper coil actually induces an electrical current in the copper coil, which can then be used to charge and power your devices. And this process is electromagnetic induction. And it's essentially the same process that occurs in any electrical motor, albeit in reverse. What can you actually use dynamos for? Well, fortunately, we have some top tips from the 2015 transcontinental winner, Josh Ibbert, who certainly knows a thing or two about endurance cycling. So according to Josh, you can charge most things from a dynamo, including phones, laptops, electric blankets, whatever. But if you are going to be charging your phone from a dynamo, Josh suggests not to use the dynamo directly into your phone, but instead charge a USB battery pack first and then charge your phone from the battery pack. The reason for this is that the DC current coming directly from the dynamo can damage your phone's battery. Why would you need a dynamo? Well, there are several reasons. The first reason is that they're great for people like me who constantly forget to charge batteries. But if you've got a dynamo, you can simply plug it in and you can still ride and you've got power and you can charge your devices. That brings me on to the second great use for dynamos, commuting. Now, I like to commute on bike whenever possible, including in the winter when it's often dark. And my commute is typically around an hour maybe even sometimes longer if I'm doing a bit more training. Now this means that I have to charge my lights daily and you don't want to be stuck at work because you've forgotten to charge your lights or having to wait for them to get some charge and having a dynamo means you'll never have to do that because you can simply run your lights off the dynamo. Finally, dynamos are loved by ultra endurance cyclists and the bike packing community. And the reason for this is that if you're riding for days on end with no civilization in sight, if you want to keep your computers, your GPS and your lights and other devices charged, then you either have to use a dynamo or carry loads of additional battery packs, which not just add loads of bulk and weight, but also are just another thing to worry about once you invariably reach civilization again. It really is rare to see an ultra endurance cyclist leave the house without a modern dynamo these days. What are the drawbacks to a dynamo hub? Well, there are two main disadvantages, weight and drag. So firstly, weight. The a Sun 28 Dynamo Hub weighs 440 grams. If we put this into context, a DT Swiss 240 Hub, which is a really common and good quality road hub that's fairly standard across a lot of wheels, weighs just 96 grams. So nearly four times more for a Dynamo Hub. In terms of drag, Hub Dynamos produce more drag than a standard hub. A Son 28 hub dynamo produces one watt of additional drag at 25 kilometers an hour when it's not turned on. And admittedly, this doesn't sound like much, but once it's turned on at that same speed, it actually increases to six watts of drag. Now, this again doesn't sound like a huge amount, but over a huge ride, this adds up significantly to a huge amount, especially if, like me, you're 
you, you, you don't have many watts in the first place. However, with modern road specific dynamos, the penalties are somewhat diminished. So with the Son Deluxe hub we have here, it's actually 50 grams lighter than the Son 28 we mentioned previously. And actually when it's built up into this Hunt Super Dura disc brake specific wheel set, it actually comes in at less than two kilograms for a complete wheel set, which for a, you know, with a dynamo and disc brake specific, that's it's pretty impressive. In terms of the drag, well, Six watts is quite a lot if you're doing a time trial or road racing, but you're not really gonna use this kind of hub for those applications. If you're bike packing or doing something like the Transcontinental, then you know that six watts isn't gonna make a huge amount of difference once you're riding a fully laden bike. And also the advantage of being able to charge all your gadgets on the fly vastly outweighs having to stop all the time to recharge them. If we're being technically correct, then most dynamos actually aren't dynamos. Confusing, I know, but they're actually what we call magnetos, which, come to think of it, is a much cooler name. What's the difference between a proper dynamo and a magneto then? Well, those of you who are fans of rock music may be familiar with ACDC. Now, proper dynamos produce DC or direct current, whereas magnetos produce AC or alternating current. The difference is, is that a proper dynamo requires a piece of kit called a commutator. Now this is a bit techy, but a commutator reverses the polarity periodically to create the DC current. This sort of power generator wouldn't really work in the way that a bicycle dynamo functions. And it's really easy for lights to have AC to DC converters. So it's not really an issue. As to why bicycle dynamos are called dynamos and not called magnetos, um, I don't really know, I have to be honest. So maybe if one of you knows, you can let us know in the comments section below. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into the world of dynamos. And if you have, why not give the video a thumbs up and also check out the GCN shop. If like me, you demand the finest t-shirts available to humanity and you demand them now, then the GCN shop is the place to go. And if you wanna watch another video, why not check out our video on the transcontinental race where you'll see loads of people using dynamos. See you later.